Hey hey, welcome back to the channel. It's awesome that you're tuning in on the Wicked Gamer and Collector. The Sega Genesis CD add-on, also known as the Sega CD or Mega CD here in my country. It's absolutely a great peripheral that was released in 1999 by Sega. So the Sega CD, I personally never owned it as a child. So basically later on where I grew up, I just wanted to have one in my collection. Realizing that the Mega Drive one was absolutely crazy expensive nowadays. At first I picked up the Sega CD2 model and that version is completely different when you're looking at the Sega CD1, but it's something we're going to talk about a little bit later. Nevertheless, Sega is one of my favorite systems even to play nowadays. The original games, but also like the Sega CD add-on. The Sega CD add-on 2 is a very reliable version if you ask me, but the, back in the day the Sega CD was considered to be a revolutionary piece of hardware. And it also had one of the first gaming consoles that incorporated in CD technology. The Sega CD was absolutely like praised for the improved graphics and sound capabilities, especially the sound and I think even up to today is that the music is absolutely amazing when it comes to the Sega CD. One of the most notable features of the Sega CD was its library of games. It's not like a big library, that is one thing to be sure, but I like a couple of hidden gems on here. Of course, Snatcher is one of them, but unfortunate it's absolutely out of reach for me as a collector, because it's way too expensive nowadays. Of course we have games like Sonic CD, Lunar and some other great titles. Unfortunate when it comes to some of the games, they're just ports from the original system up to the Sega CD and even having a minor enhancement when it comes to the graphical parts and having like great music. I think the music that is for me like the most, I say appealing thing to the Sega CD. I feel very fortunate to basically like get a couple of games in my collection. For example, like the Jaguar racing game. I mostly play Sonic CD and Final Fight CD. Two favorite games, to be honest, it's kind of wicked to say, but that's one of the reasons why I wanted to have one, one of the Sega CD versions. The Sonic CD, unfortunate, it has been ported to basically every single platform you can think of. If it's your PlayStation, your Xbox, or an Android phone, you can play this game everywhere. For me, that doesn't spoil the fun. I still really love and enjoy playing Sonic CD on my original Sega CD, because for me, that is the full retro feeling that I wanted to have with this. But when you're looking at the Sega CD number one or Mega CD one, I really love it. Combined with a 32X and you have absolutely the power tower of Sega. The thing is, the problem also is like we do have like some problems with a Mega City is like now and in the future. Think about bad capacitors or basically the bells are going to break so the draw of the disc will not open anymore. Things that you need to take consideration if you're buying in like one of these like Mega CD or Sega CD versions. It does need some maintenance now but also in the future. The Sega CD Model 1 was released in 1992 and at its first version of the CD peripheral. But when it comes to the Sega CD version number 2, that one was released in 1993 and it featured a more streamlined and compact design and compared with the model number 1, it was like not that bulky anymore. Yeah, we did have no draw basically opening up, it was a top loader, this drive, but when you're combining the Mega Drive 2 with the Sega CD 2, it looks so much more cooler than like adding the bulky model 1. I think it's a very beautiful, sleek design and personally, I'm just going to be honest, it's still one of my favorite when it comes to designs. And if you want to play all of your Sega CD games, they will just work fine on the Model 2 as on the Model 1. But let's take a close look at Model number 1. Personally, I really love the Sega Genesis or Mega Drive 1 and I love to have like the original Mega CD. But the problem with this device is finding a good working one. And yeah, maybe in the future I will need to have some maintenance like the drive belt of the disk drive, maybe new laser or need to have some capacitors. But how do you assemble it? Like that. Easy peasy, lemon squeezy. But what you need to do over here, we need to assemble the metal plate, otherwise we cannot click it together. That's one of the things that you need to take consideration. And of course, you need to remove the dust cap from the connector, because you need to slide it in over here, otherwise it cannot communicate with the Sega CD1. Okay, so there was one thing, I know there are some fake ones out there, or fake HDMI Segas, and the cheap ones like the Hyper Kin or another one from AliExpress don't work. It looked kind of silly if you ask me. If I'm going to recall it correctly, analog is one of the systems that can be working with the Sega CD. But even if the Chinese editions like the HD retro game should work on the device like that, it looks hideous. But how do you connect this bad boy? Yup, we're going to need two freaking power supplies. So yeah, and if you're going to have a 32x on it, you're going to need three of them. But there are some things you need to know. 
Nowadays, there are companies making special power adapters or basically different ways to play and you can use this power supply and this is of course an after market but that works very well so here we're going to get one for the triple solution you also have one for the two take consideration the sega cd one two and the mega drives that have like all different connectors you need to take consideration which connector you need but it's great to see that we're going to see different solutions nowadays okie dokie so when it comes to SCART connections Take consideration you need to get at least a good cable and uh, this is a special made cable there is a guy in the uk selling these things and what you're going to get is a quality cable with the original din connector and, and at the front we're going to get the option to use the stereo sound like where the mega drive one basically shines the best if you ask me and of course we can also have the option to use the tulip at the back or the other connections so we're going to get some options with a sega cd but we can buy special cables what I find quite an interesting piece of engineering is the way how this device works. How do you boot it up and how are you going to enter your disc? Because there is a slider but there is no button for eject. So of course if you're going to plug in the game like here, you can turn it on and it will boot up like normal and the disc drive unit will not work. And if you're going to turn it off, you're going to pull out the cartridge, you're going to turn on the system, it will automatically detect that there's no game and it will boot up in the Mega CD. Press the reset button, it will open up the disc tray and that's it. And you're ready to go. Next up, what we need to do is plug in a controller because that is something we're going to need of course for playing. But also we need to press the start button. When you press the start button over here, first time it will give the signal to close the disc tray and then we're ready we can press the start button and we can play the game but how does the mega cd number two work it basically the only thing that we need to do is don't put in any game just boot it up and that's it because with the previous one we need to open the draw and that's not necessary here because we're having top loader so i think it's slightly easier to basically like boot up your games and less mumbo jumbo so when it comes to playing games on the Sega CD2, it's even easier if my button doesn't get stuck and the lid don't close. But beside that point, yep, just drop it in, close it, and yep, yep, there we go. And we're ready to play some games. About playing games, let's start it up and let's have a lot of fun. Just play some games and let's see how they actually work on the Mega CD1 or 2. So let's go. Some have an intro. I think they were like the extra add-ons that we're going to get with the Sega CD add-on and basically that was more like the Sega CD was the next generation I know they did some minor tweaks here and there with some of the games but I think the audio was one of the key features of this device next up let's try Final Fight CD this is absolutely my number one game for the Sega CD in general so I will show you why that is. Okay, so when it comes to Final Fight, I love Final Fight, I love beat em ups, but the music makes this game epic. And all including the game soundtracks are freaking awesome. So fun fact, like I'm a big Street of Rage fan. I didn't play Final Fight back the day a lot because I didn't own a Super NES. And when I was getting older, I did get myself a Super NES, but I never got the game Final Fight. So it's quite interesting that they did release this game eventually on the Sega CD with a freaking epic soundtrack. The Sega CD or Mega CD is absolutely a very cool peripheral that you can pick up for your Sega. It's a very cool, let's say, novelty that you could pick up from back in the day. Yeah, take consideration when it comes to the Model 1 and Model 2. My favorite one is always the number 1, but the number 2, as making this video, is way cheaper to get. I want to thank you all for watching. Consider subscribing, and it would be great to see you in the next video.